Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today I will solve some problem that you will find on page number 742. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Page 742, the first problem number 23. If after having watched this video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep.icloud.com. Alright, let's begin. Number 23, we are told that we have a cylindrical, cylindrical can. I have drawn here a cylindrical can. The volume of the cylinder, as you know, depends on two things. The volume, how much stuff you can put in the cylinder depends on two things. It depends on how wide open it is, which is the area of either the opening of the top or the, or the area, area of the base, the same thing. How wide open it is and how deep it is. How wide open it is, is the area of the circular region at the bottom or the top, pi r squared and the height. So typically, when we're talking about the volume of a circular cylinder, it, it would be able Ordinarily, we do deal something like we deal with something like this pi r squared times h. But in this particular problem, we are told with the, with the area of the base. The area of the base we are told is 75 centimeters squared, and the height we are told is 10 centimeter. The question simply is, we're going to put in this cylinder uh, some fruit. It's the, it's the factory where they where they sell canned food. And if you ever, ever bought canned food, you will know that when you open the can, you have pieces of fruit inside, and then we have some syrup inside. So the syrup that we have here is 110 cubic centimeter and the question simply is what's the volume what's the volume of the fruit volume of the volume of the fruit the volume of the pieces of fruit that we have so we don't actually need this mumbo jumbo it's very straightforward because we don't have to work with this we don't have to worry about any of this thing that tell you what the what the what the what the base is the base is this part right here is 75 this part right here is 75 and this part the height here we are told is 10 so it's just 75 times 10 so the volume is simply 750 the volume of the base pi r squared which we are told is 75 centimeters squared the height we are told is 10 so 75 times is 750 so that's it we are done then if you want to find the volume of the fruit we just subtract 7 110 from 750 750 is the volume of the entire can, 110 is the volume of the syrup, so how much stuff you can put into it is simply 640 cubic centimeter. That's how much, that is the volume of the pieces of fruit that you will find in that can. Next one, number 24. Number 24, we are given an equation here which measures the height of an object at any given time by using this equation minus 16t squared plus 110t plus 72 the question here is question here is what is the interpretation of 72 what does 72 represent as you can clearly see from here 72 would be the height when t is equal to 0 is t naught is the value of the function at t equal to 0 at t naught it is 72 so what do you suppose 72 represents it represents the height at time equal to 0 in other words it represents the initial height apparently it is launched in the air not from the ground not from ground 0 but something that is 72 units high whatever the 72 happens to be feet or inch inches whatever it happens to be and that's what it is it is feet so we're launching it from 72 feet in the air it goes up in the air and then it comes down so 72 is the initial height because when t is equal to zero that's what that is let's look at number 25 for 25 we have to have a little chart here we are told that this is protein, this is fat, this is carbohydrate, this is calorie, and this is energy for 
and 16.7 and so forth. Question number 25 asks us which of the following represents the relationship between x and k? x is the, x is the calorie and letter k is used to represent the energy because the calorie is being measured in terms of kilojoules and x is to represent or rather the energy is, rep is represented by kilojoules, joules is a unit of energy. What's the relationship between x and a? Well, as you can see here, think of this 16.7, just round it. Think of this as 16. If it is 16, then k, which is the energy, k, if it's 16, is just 4 times 4. It's 4 times x. Think of this as 36. Again, 36 would be 4 times 9. As you can see, if, it, if we round this to 36, 36 is simply 4 times 9. Here again, this is 4 times 4. So the relationship between k and x is that k is equal to 4x. k is equal to 4x. And that's all there is. It is the next one that is interesting, number 25, which, uh, number 26, which relates with this same thing, which is more interesting. We are told that 180 calories were drawn from p gram p gram of protein f grams of fat and c grams of carb carbohydrate based on that information it says if 180 calories are contained in the granola bar which has p grams of protein, f grams of fat and c grams of carbohydrate which of the following expresses f in terms of p and c well let's see what we can do first we could, before we worry about how to express f in terms of the other two variables we first have to come up with the equation based on the fact that it contains 180 grams of to total, total calories coming from p grams of protein, f grams of fat and c grams of carbohydrate so let's see what we can do. We know this this chart here tells us that one gram, one gram of protein has one gram of protein. This this chart here, this right here, calorie. It represents the number of cal number of calories that one gram contains. One gram of protein has four calories. So far so good. Well, if one gram if one gram of protein has four calories, then it stands to reason that if we had instead of one gram, if we had p gram, then p gram must contain four times p calories. Similarly, similarly, if 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 one gram of carbohydrate, if one gram of carbohydrate, if one gram of carbohydrate has four calories then C gram, C gram of carbohydrate must contain 4 times C calories. And similarly, if 1 gram of fat, we are told that 1 gram of fat has 9 calories. If 1 gram of fat has 9 calories, then instead of 1 gram, if we had 2 grams, it would have been 2 times 9. If we had 3 grams, it would have been 3 times 9. If we had 10 grams of fat, it would have been 10 times 9. If you have f gram of fat, if you have f grams of fat, we must have 9 times f calories. That's what it is. And the total has to be 180. There is your equation. There is our equation. So the equation is, now that we don't need this anymore, I'm going to erase this thing. We don't need any of this thing, because I need the room. So the equation is that the total calories that we have is 180, which is coming from 4 times p calories. This is the number of calories we get from p gram of protein plus nine times F plus nine times F calories from F gram of fat plus four times C from, four, from C grams of carbohydrate. And that's all. Now that, our, that now that we have our equation, 
we can worry about what they're asking us to do. They're asking us to solve for f. That's all it is. It says which of the following expresses f in terms of the other two variables. Let's do it. We are interested in f here. So 9f, 9f would have to be equal to 180. Bring the 4p to this side. Minus 4p, minus 4c. And we don't want 9f, we want just f by itself, so just divide the whole thing by 9. If we do that, f would equal to 180 over 9 minus 4 over 9p minus 4 over 9c. 180 divided by 9, 9 18, has, 18 has two 9s and 0 has no, no, no 9, so it's 20. So f is equal to 20 minus, and here we see here we see that we have a common factor. We have a common factor of 4 over 9. You see it right here. And better yet, better yet, instead of taking it just 4 over 9, let's take out negative 4 over 9. If we take out negative 4 over 9 as a common factor, here we are left with p, and here we will be left with positive c. Because the positive c and a neg and this negative and this positive will give us our negative. That's it, we're done. That's the answer. 20 minus 4 9 times p plus c. And that is going to be answer choice d. That is answer choice d. That was 26. That was number 26. Let's look at number 27. Number 27 says that we have a growth rate of One point nine per cent per annum. We are further told that the population in nineteen forty five, population in nineteen forty five, and again, which is why it's important to have the book in front of you. You must read yourself. You must read the problem yourself. Population in nineteen forty five, we were told, was four billion. The question simply is: if that's the case. How do we model this equation so that we can figure out what, what, the population, what the projected population is in any given year, beginning with 1945, 1945 as being a base year, time zero. So if you want to find out three years from 1945, or if you want to find out what the population is going to be five years from 1945 or 30 years from 1945, based on the assumption that the world population is growing approximately 2% a year, or 1.9%. Let's see what we can do. As you can clearly see, or at least I hope that you can clearly see, that it is an exponential growth. And the population at any given time, beginning with 1945 as the base year, is simply 1 plus 0 0.0, 0 0.019. 0 0.019 is in 1% because point, point 0 0.01 would have been 1%, point 0 0.02 would have been 2%. We don't have 1%, we don't have 2%, we have 1.9, so it's 0.019. I don't know why I'm explaining so much. There you go. Raised to, raised to T, there you go. The time period. That's all there is. That's all there is. And that is going to be answer choice. That is answer choice A. That is answer choice A. Except they write it together as 1.019. It's the same thing. And that's answer choice A. That's number 27. Let's look at 28. Number 28. Number 28, we are told that point ST lies on the line. The question is, what's the ratio of T to S? S the point with the coordinate ST lies on the line. Which line? The well, line I'm, that I'm going to just show you. The line, the line that is given to us, of course, that line. We notice that it goes through the origin line goes through the origin and we are told that one of the points that it goes through is 3, 6. 
And how do we find out the ratio of T to S based on the fact that this point ST lies on that line? Well, if that point if that point lies on the line, we can show it anywhere you like. It makes no difference. Put it anywhere you like. Here, here's, here's, here's the point S T. And since this goes through the origin, the slope of this line. slope of this line, which is the change in y over the change in x, is simply, is simply the change in y, we use this point here as the, as, the, as the second point, so it's just 6 minus 0 over 3 minus 0, because it goes through the origin. In other words, the slope is simply 6 over 3. 6 over 3, and that's the same ratio, if you were to do this, this if it, that, that, the slope of course would be the same, because it's a straight line, the slope of course would be the same, if instead of using this point, if we had yet use, if we had, if we had used this point, if we had used this point, it would have been t minus zero over s minus zero. In other words, it's simply t over s. Well, there you go. The ratio of t to s, t to s is just six to three. Ratio is six to three or two to one. The ratio is two to one. Then was number twenty-eight. That also. That also happens to be the last problem on the page. We're not going to start a new page today. We'll meet again tomorrow, of course, and we're going to pick up our story from where we, from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, as I, as I already told you before, send me an email at kishwaniprep at iCloud.com. All right? Bye now.